What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel for another market update. Hope everybody's having a lovely day. And with that being said, let's get into the TA. Before we do so, please like the video. The algorithm would appreciate it, and it would definitely help me reach more people. So I would definitely appreciate it, and I would love you. Let's go on. All right, so first thing I'm going to point out is you did leave this gap open. I'm also going to point out you have one, you have two, you have three, you have four gaps open to the downside. Guess what you don't have? You don't have any gaps now open to the upside. Now, where did SPY run into? This is where we called out yesterday. Like You could start seeing resistance. Like Technically, this is the last structure that was on the chart, but it got filled. All right, you do see like that's not the most recent structure. The most recent structure that is unfilled on the chart would be all the way up here. Now, I will point out, we did break to the upside out of this uh, rising wedge we got. Guys, another vertical rising wedge, another breakout to the upside. That's just how things go. Um, it, it, listen, guys, the markets can do absolutely anything that they want. We've clearly seen that clear as day over the past few weeks. Like, if guys, if you wanted to go off of fundamentals, guess what? It didn't matter. You just had to keep playing the chart, all right? If you, if you played with the trend... We're a okay. Like we even called uh, back over here on QQQ, and it actually applies to SPY. So that's what I'm gonna say in a sec here. Um, but back over here, guys, I pointed out this condition. I didn't say it had to go down like that, but I pointed out that uh, you know since we started this uptrend, every single time you crossed back over the AEMA on the four-hour time frame, you did end up resuming the uptrend or at least consolidating. Well, that's exactly what we got over here. Look at this. You break. Boom, continue the uptrend. All right, you break, break back over, continue. Excuse me, moi. Continue the uptrend, all right? So you would have known from here, you know, that's an $11 move, guys. So, like, if, if you did heed the warning, then, then there you go. Um, but in reality, we didn't know what was going to happen. But guess what we did know, all right? We got the breakout from the inverse head and shoulders. I told you guys I was watching for the hourly close over here. You did end up getting that. You didn't reach the completed measure move here. So like, hey guys, we could be going higher. I'm not sure. We're going to talk a little bit uh, about FOMC in this video and like what I'm expecting. There's two scenarios, guys. There really is. Let's actually talk about it right now, all right? Guys, if they announce a rate hike over here on SPY, I, I am looking for these gaps to be filled. That is what I will be watching for. I'm going to be looking for all of these daily gaps. Not all of them, all right? Uh, but I'm I, I'm going to say, if we do see a rate hike, then it's very likely that we are going to see a move back down here, all right? I'm not saying we're going to reach four, 400, but like, hey, clearly see this was a heavily traded zone here, all right? Which means there are going to be like buyers and sellers in this zone. Um, so, you know, that's, that's probably going to act as magna on top of that. We do have all these gaps, so... Uh, those are also going to act as magnets, and we don't have any upside gaps. So that's something to know. Uh, now, I am going to point out right here, all right, you did end up, you know, you had that going on. You had the structure going on, but the next real place to be looking for is going to be all the way up here at 448. Uh, like I was just pointing out, that you did break to the upside. That is something to be open to. You got to be open to it. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I am definitely saying, hey, it's on the table. We've clearly seen the markets could do whatever they want. If they want to be pumped to extremes, they could be pumped to extremes. All right, you see this RSI? I'm sure a lot of people, such as myself, we were watching up here. We were like, yeah, this thing doesn't have a lot of juice left. And guess what? It did. That's why I haven't been making any crazy calls. Like people have been calling for a crash. What people don't understand is you have to break all this structure. All right, you have to break all of this, all right? If you want to see a crash, you have to at least come down here and switch the trend. 380, that is the place to watch. That is the last major low. You're going to want to watch that because you just put in another major high after this major high and this major high and this major high, all right? In reality, you've had a clear as day uptrend, and until you break that, no bear should really be sitting there calling for a 2008 or dot-com style crash. Yes, you can't happen. It can happen, but like, dude, you're just going to lose a ton of money if that's actually what you're going to be betting on. No, just play the chart. It is much, much easier that way. All right, so let's come down here to the four-hour time frame. I am going to point out you did burn through this divergence, so typically when I see that, you get a explosive move. So let's see when that did end up uh, burning through right here. So it was this candlestick right here, it looks like, right here, 431. You did end up going up another five bucks. All right, so, I mean, we could have seen that explosive move play out. I'm not sure, but, hey, the fact that there's no divergent now shows, like, hey, all right, this thing on any pullback, it can just continue higher. We're going to have to literally just wait and see what happens here, all right? As a bull, you want to see you hold this August high here. This is the first red zone I got right here. You want to see the August high hold, which is about 432 to down to 430. 
If you do start seeing a daily close underneath the August high, then it means this is a false breakout. That would validate this is a false breakout. It would confirm that we are very likely going to be seeing 425.99 and 422.92 again. And what happens there? I have no idea. All right. We're, we literally just got to play this by ears and, uh, you know, see how this thing goes. Let's come on over to QQQ. All right. You did end up, you know, breaking out from this inverse head and shoulders. You didn't reach the measured move. All right. But like as a bull, what do you want? You want to be coming back here and back testing this 357 ish. Yeah, 357, 358-ish uh, neckline that we had here. And then if you do end up bouncing off of that, you want to break back up, up above here. If you do end up breaking back above here, what is your next spot to be watching? Up here at the March 2022 high. Not Again, I'm not saying it's going to happen. It's just something we have to be open to because that's what the charts are suggesting. Like if we get that specific price action, that is what they'll be suggesting. Uh, I am going to point out, though, if you do get up there, all right, you got the 0.786 Fibonacci up here at 375, and then you also have the March 22 high up there. So uh, you're definitely going to have sellers up here, but then again, you had sellers over here at the August high, and they got burnt. So that is something to note. You went slightly above the August high, boom, you had a decent-sized pullback, and you were off the races. That very much so can happen. I don't think it's going to happen because... Uh, let me just come over. Oh, I was going to type in the weekly there. Uh, let's just come over here to the weekly time frame. Do you see this RSI? All right. When was the RSI last like this? The RSI was last like this at the high. That is exactly when this was taking place. Um, we also do have the AAII investor sentiment survey coming out and showing a complete switch from bearish to bullish. We haven't seen that switch in over 12 months. That was the high of 12 months. So again, we have clear as day signs that people are just switching to longs here and that uh really is the wrong move if you're asking me if you wanted to go long i, I think you probably should have done that along the way and not as the whole entire like the mo the vast majority of the crowd is switching along it's just probably not going to end well um but yeah those are just my thoughts guys that is what i'll be watching for guys you get a rate hike all right you're probably going to come down here to 400 to 410 all right if you do not get a rate hike and you get a pause guys that is the scenario in which this is completely on the table you come in right up that's why i said be open to it all right if you get the fundamentals to back up this you know what we're seeing this breakout here then yeah this is completely on the table in my opinion and uh i i I would probably expect like, hey, you're, if you get the pause, you're probably going to come anywhere from here to over here. And like, that's just something that, hey, if you're going to hold puts against, like you got to think about that one. That's something that everyone has to make their own decisions. But guess what? All right. I'm telling you, would, would that not make the, the market very euphoric? Why wouldn't it? All right. We, they've been hiking rates since the beginning of 2020. Well, not the beginning. I think like, you know, second quarter of 2022. They've been aggressively hiking these rates at the fastest pace they've ever done. Guys, if they issue the pause, guess what? You know, uh, the crowd that's been super, super, super bullish, they've been right up until, like, I think they're about to be wrong, but they've been right up until now. Well, guess what? They're going to continue being right if that's the case, and they're going to be like, oh, we're right, pile, everybody pile on. And that's when you see everyone get in, and then maybe you do have the shot of coming up here, and then... I don't know if you go to all-time highs, but I'm going to say, like, hey, that is uh, a scenario that I would be watching for. And uh, what follows the pause, all right? Why are they pausing? Because something breaks. So, you know, down the line, I don't know how far down the line, that is when we know, like, hey, it's time that we have to start being open for a crash. That is that. But until we start seeing this structural damage on the chart, guys, you know, technically speaking, no one should be calling for that crash. So if anybody is, you know, consider who you're listening to, all right? All right, guys, I think that is pretty much it. I just wanted to give you a brief little update. I do have, uh, I got PT for my foot. I've, I'm currently going through PT for my hand and my foot. So not every day I have PT, but a lot of these days I do. And then I also got to go help out Antonio early today. So um, that is why I'm recording this video so early here. But I hope I, uh, you know, I, I hope I got the job done, even though it's so early in the day. All right, with that being said, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.